Hey everyone, it's Steph here with our second video continuing our deep dive into detailing and texturing this cargo ship model. In the previous video, we added bevels to the sharp edges of the CAD high poly model and baked that down onto the game ready low poly model using tool bags bake projects. In this video, I'm going to start adding details to the foundational forms of the model using vector layers. Because the high poly was left relatively clean of details, I have so much more room to add a medium detail pass that would traditionally be done at the tail end of the high poly modeling pipeline. Moving the high poly detailing pass to the texturing stage not only speeds up the modeling pipeline, but it also means that when I add all those surface panels and rivet details, they can be iterated upon easily. It makes for a super flexible workflow, especially in production. Here is the texturing scene I set up in the last video, which has the texture project already hooked up and ready to go. I want to start adding the hard surface details that show up on the original concept art. I'm going to work on the major forms first, which will be the riveted panels that cover the ship. I'll start by adding a base fill layer and name it base color. Then I can change the color of it to mimic a darker metal. After that, I'll create a new vector layer from the layer toolbar and rename it to panel lines. Let's start by focusing on the fuselage. I'll use the pen tool for this as it's simple to just click around to get the lines I need, especially when doing this tricky bit around the front headlights. If you have ever used a vector or spline tool in another program, this should be pretty similar. Click to add a sharp point, click and drag to add one with Bezier handles for curve control. I can switch to the control point tool to adjust the points or Bezier handles to my liking. I can even delete points by simply right clicking. Up on the toolbar, I can adjust how the point handles operate. So I can set this point to have non-mirrored handles, which will allow me finer control on this corner. Hmm, this is great, but I should turn on symmetry while I do this. I'll set the mode to mirror on Z, since that's the mirror axis on this model. And look at that. Now I don't have to draw on the other side. Phew. Let me clean this up by snapping these lines to the center here. Snapping vectors along the center line flags them as unified, so things like profiles will work seamlessly with them. Speaking of profiles, I should set these up now so I can work with a closer representation of the end result. First, I'll disable all active maps except for bump. Don't worry, the vectors are still there. It's just because the profile is set to default. Profiles affect the bump and displacement values of the vector layer, so if I go into the profile list and select Basin, we'll be able to see the vectors show themselves again. Let's set this to Core to get something more like a panel line. Hmm, this isn't what I want it to look like. If I look at some reference on my other monitor, ideally I'd want the metal to bow up a tiny bit before cutting in to simulate the shape of two metal panels butting up against each other and being riveted down. I'll need to make a new profile shape for that. So let me blow your mind, like what happened to me when I found out this tool existed. <laughs> so hit edit here under the profile icon and it will come up with this cool floating window that will allow me to set the profile's cross section. This is a grid between 0 and 1. The midline on the grid is the bump's neutral point. If I scroll down to the bump input map, the neutral point is set at 0 0.5. If I drop the value to 0, you'll notice the whole tube will sync. I'll reset this to 0 0.5 and edit the profile points below and above the midline. Now, going back down to the bump value, I'll drag this towards zero and it's easier to see how the bottom profile gets clamped. Same if I drag the value to one. The top part gets clamped and the midpoint now becomes the highest point. So I'll right click to delete this scallop here. Then I'll set a slight curve up for quite a bit of this profile's cross section, adjusting the points to Bezier just like so to get the profile I want. 
I'll set the width setting to 2 and also set the random width to 2 and the frequency to something low so it adds a bit of variance. I forgot to reset the midpoint so I'll do that now. Awesome, that should do for now and I can continue making some panel lines. I'll do the ones on the nose here. I'll use the shape tools to make the curves for the sensor and I'll use a curve tool to quickly make a line across the front. Well, 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 we can all see what's going on here. Looks like setting these parts to symmetry won't work so well for this. But I have a way of disabling symmetry on a vector layer on a per spline level. I can go to the shapes list and find the circle icon here. If I click this, this will turn into a half circle, which means symmetry is now disabled on this one spline. Now I can work with symmetrical and non-symmetrical splines in the same vector layer, keeping continuity with the way tubes and shapes interact with each other. You can see here where I'll connect this horizontal nose line to the targeting pod panel. This way we get the cool default mitering effect when the two tubes connect seamlessly merging them. So there are a lot of vectors on this model. Every time I draw a new spline, it will add it to the shapes list. Then I can go through and select the shape easily if I want to re-edit it with the control point tool. Or if I have a shape I want to duplicate, I can do that easily with a simple right click on the shapes panel or hitting the duplicate button. Then I can use the control shape tool to move the entire spline as one shape across the mesh. After that, I can use Shift to select multiple shapes to easily group them into folders, which is what I'll want to do when I get them all in. Actually, give me a few hours and I'll come back to you with a fully splined up copper for you. Righto, check out all these panel lines. I went through and named them by just double clicking the name of the spline. Then I went through and put them into folders. This is just for my sanity and future me. You're welcome, future me. This is super useful to keep track of things like what splines have symmetry, so I can make sure I don't lose them. But I still have some work to do, because what are panels held down by? Rivets, and hundreds of them, at every single panel edge. Never fear, this daunting task isn't as bad as you would think. I'm not gonna go away for a few more hours to painfully place a whole slew of new vector lines in for the rivets because I'm going to use the existing lines to place them. To do that, first I'll duplicate this vector layer and rename it to rivets. Next, I'll throw on this really neat double rivet brush from the library onto the vector layer, which will convert it to a brush mode vector layer. And see, now we have rivets everywhere. Let me adjust some of the brush settings like size and spacing. I can also turn off everything except the normal here as these are going to be painted over rivets, like on most fuselages. Now, we also need a few new rivets placed for just general fixing to the plane's airframe. So I'll create a new vector layer and call this one airframe rivets. I'm just gonna go and approximate where the airframe is. So the ribs run along the fuselage and the main ribs on the wing airframe. Easy as. Now I'll throw on a single rivet brush and set the spacing a little more than the panel rivets. For extra detail, I'm going to duplicate this layer and throw on a soft default brush. I'll set this to a large size and maximum softness. Then I'll enable bump only and set the value to slightly divot this in. Dropping a blur above it will help soften it more. This is the slight warping of the metal where the rivets fix it down. It really adds to the shape of the aircraft's body. I can then mask out sections of the rivet layer to remove rivets I don't want to see, or if they are doubling up in tight spaces. I reckon that should just about do it. Yeah, that looks great. So now it's time for some raised panels, which can help show maintenance points on the aircraft. I'll make a new vector layer and call this raised panels. I'll set the vector layer mode to solid and turn on symmetry. Then I'll start by drawing these fuel and ground power connectors on the underside of the wing here 
and also make a center tail one here. I'm going to make a bit of a complex shape by making a circle, then subtracting a smaller rectangle out of it. I can use the boolean function to cut out the rectangle from the circle. The boolean operator is only found on vector layers and the controls for it are over in the shapes list. The operation will go top down, so the top object will operate on the ones under it. If you nest a child into a parent shape, the child will operate on the parent and also in a top down order in this list. Parenting splines this way helps isolate boolean operators from other splines in the list, so play around with parenting shapes when doing boolean operations for greater control. I'll continue to edit this rectangle to round the corners. I'll select the inside corners and use the point controller to round these out nicely. Okay, lastly, I'll add an access panel on one side of the front by turning off symmetry like we did earlier. Right, now that I have some shapes for these, I'll turn off everything but bump and set up a custom profile for this. Basically, I want it to go in and then up so it sticks out a bit, but also shows that it's a panel like the rest, so it has a cutout scene. So I've made this little divot here and then raised it up. I put a slight bolt in the top to keep it in line with the other panels. Brilliant stuff. They really add a bit of greeble detail, which is really cool. And I get to show off again how cool vector profiles are. It's a win-win. Righto, the last bit of hard surface detail I'm going to cover is making the hubcaps on these wheels. I'm going to make a new vector layer called hubcap spokes. This time I'm going to set the symmetry from mirror on Z to radial and then set the axes. Now, sure, we have the base three axes of our three dimensional world available, but look at this fourth option here. This custom option is where we can really level up our radial symmetry game. So I'll click that and hit align. I'll click the hubcap center and it should snap the axes to that. Great, but if you look, the guidelines don't really line up. This is where the fine tune button comes in. We'll fine tune the position of this radial center by switching the view to the side, which is in this case the front view, and then use the gizmo and wireframe view to help align it to the middle. So I'll line this up as well as I can to the middle, and then I can start drawing in a simple shape. I better change this to the solid mode and set the radial count to something cute like 10. Change the profile to something simple like groove panel and set the layer to bump. Much better. Look at those spokes. Don't worry about the radial number. We can adjust that to something like 24 and it's a whole different feel. And I can also tweak the axes alignment if it feels a bit off. I'll add a couple of score lines on the wheel rubber for the wheel tread by duplicating the layer and clearing it for tube mode. Now I can draw in one line in the middle of the wheel like so. Then with the power of profiles, I can make some center rib tread commonly seen on aircraft wheels. In this, I'll add two grooves like so. Then I'll widen the tube. <laughs> Check that out, four lines for the price of one. Radial symmetry is such a great hack when you can use it, so defo have a play with it when you get the chance. That just about covers all the vector hard surface detailing for this video. For the next episode, I'll jump into using carve groups for adding metal details in different forms. So definitely stay tuned and follow the channel to find out when the next one will drop. Cheerio friends!